Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We are looking at uh, varying area ducts and uh, until now we have discussed about uh, equations of varying area ducts and nozzle operation. Uh, the other kind of uh, ducts where uh, we find compressible flow and is uh, having a lot of applications is the diffuser. In a nozzle flow is accelerated while in a diffuser flow uh, is decelerated. Uh, typical examples of uh, diffusers are in intakes uh, of air breathing engines or even uh, in uh, wind tunnels and several other uh, uh, such um, applications where flow velocity is needs to be reduced and pressure has to be recovered. So, let us look at uh, how these devices work. Uh, so, uh, this is completely compressible flow. Uh, so, uh, across a diffuser uh, velocity decreases and uh, pressure temperature density will increase and uh, mm, you have we already have discussed these uh, differences in uh, the kinds of diffusers it is not uh, uh, the shape. So, you should understand that a diverging diffuser mm, if this acts as a diffuser then uh, the inlet should have a Mach number less than 1 subsonic. Then the outlet uh, will have Mach number less than 1, but at a lower Mach number. Uh, while a converging uh, uh, duct if it acts as a diffuser inlet will be uh, greater than 1 and outlet will be uh, greater than 1, uh, but at a lower Mach number. If you want to convert a supersonic flow uh, to subsonic values decrease it to subsonic velocities. Uh, then uh, you need a convergent uh, divergent uh, diffuser. So, uh, that is the uh, uh, important point here and uh, similar to C D nozzles you have a minimum area here at the throat ok that is the uh, throat and inlet is supersonic m is greater than 1 outlet is uh, subsonic m is less than 1. Uh, but uh, unlike nozzles, nozzles operate uh, where the pressure continues to reduce. So, that kind of uh, a reducing pressure uh, is known as favorable pressure gradient because it uh, accelerates the flow and also in the context of uh, viscous effects when there are boundary layers near the wall, uh, then favorable uh, pressure gradients are good because uh, they keep the boundary layer, uh, they do not disturb the boundary layer much, uh, but uh, a diffuser operates uh, in uh, adverse pressure gradient because pressure increases across the diffuser uh, and this is not very good for the boundary layer. Uh, in adverse pressure gradients boundary layer have tendencies to uh, separate from, uh, so when boundary layer separation happens lot of other phenomena happen you get shocks within the ducts. So, uh, it is actually very difficult to achieve complete uh, shock free uh, diffuser operation unlike uh, that of the nozzles. So, nozzles uh, you can achieve that, uh, but diffusers it is difficult. So, uh, uh, there are other reasons also why shocks uh, are uh, will be present inside uh, diffusers. So, that way uh, diffusers are uh, quite different from nozzles. Uh, so, um, if you look at uh, uh, subsonic uh, diffusers, uh, typical examples we take as intakes. What intakes do is they capture mass uh, from the air, surrounding air and uh, they uh, take the mass and push, uh, push it in towards the engine. It may be uh, a gas turbine engine or at high speeds it can be a ramjet or a scramjet engine. Uh, so, uh, the required amount of mass flow for the uh, engine is uh, uh, provided by the intake 
by appropriately capturing the mass as well as uh, it uh, reduces the velocity um, and uh, uh, so uh, increases pressure. So, there is a compression involved in uh, intakes. The compression can happen uh, external to the intake duct itself. For example, this is a constant area duct. Uh, so, uh, it is a subsonic flow. So, there is uh, uh, information propagation can happen regarding pressure disturbances both ways, uh, both upstream and uh, downstream. So, as a consequence, the capture area that is uh, uh, the um, area from which mass is getting captured uh, ca can change. Okay, so, that can change in a subsonic flow. So, if uh, in case the mass that is required by engine is uh, smaller, uh, then a uh, lot of mass spills over the intake. So, that is called the spillage uh, over the lip and what uh, this does is it causes additional uh, drag. So, uh, when you consider uh, flows over intake, it is not only about um, how much pressure recovery or diffusion you can do, it also has to do how much mass flow you can capture and what should be as small as possible drag. Um, the other one is that you also have uh, a uh, divergent uh, duct. So, incoming flow is subsonic uh, m is uh, less than 1. Uh, then uh, if there is a divergent duct, it will diffuse the flow that is it will uh, v 2 will be less than v 1. Uh, so, uh, these are uh, internal compression where compression is happening uh, inside the uh, ducts. Okay. So, uh, these are uh, types of uh, intakes. Now, uh, there are many uh, aircrafts which fly uh, supersonic uh, also. What are those kind of intakes? What are the flow features around them? Uh, we can still have for uh, supersonic flows, uh, we can still have uh, a divergent duct, uh, but now uh, you know that a divergent duct. Uh, uh, with an incoming uh, supersonic flow, it accelerates the supersonic flow, but it is not just the duct itself, we should know about the pressure ratios. In uh, diffuser operation, the pressure ratios are always high, back pressures are higher. So, if you need uh, acceleration, back pressure should be low. So, but uh, for diffusers, back pressure is high, therefore, it will not support a uh, supersonic flow going in through this divergent duct. Uh, so, the way this can be uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 solved is by having a, a normal shock sitting right at the uh, entry of the duct. So, when you have a normal shock, uh, then immediately flow is turned uh, subsonic and then uh, uh, the uh, further compression happens inside the duct. These are normal shock uh, kind of uh, intakes, but uh, when you have normal shocks, you should uh, remember that there is uh, large entropy production. So, uh, the efficiency takes a hit um, because of uh, normal shock, uh, but it does provide good compression. Okay. Uh, now, if the uh, mass flow requirement is further uh, lower, it is smaller, uh, then uh, this normal shock is pushed away from the lip of the intake and flow spills over. Okay, so, uh, and you have a sort of bow kind of a shock, where uh, near the intake, uh, near the lip it will be nearly normal, but elsewhere it can be curved. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if pressure is uh, further uh, reduced on the uh, back side, uh, then it can allow a certain supersonic flow uh, inside the duct. So, this uh, a kind of operations, uh, one must be now familiar with so many discussions of uh, varying area uh, ducts. Okay. So, uh, this uh, kind of uh, intakes which can allow normal shocks to happen uh, outside are normal shock kind of intakes, but here uh, you can expect uh, large uh, entropy rise and uh, pressure recovery is affected because P naught 2 by P uh, P naught 1 uh, reduces across a uh, normal shock. Right. 
Uh, now, uh, if you want uh, much better pressure recovery uh, than normal shock uh, intakes, then uh, you should uh, one will always consider uh, convergent divergent diffusers, which can uh, convert a subsonic flow. Uh, uh, sorry, a supersonic flow. Uh, it's a diffuser, supersonic flow to a subsonic flow. Entry is Mach number greater than one. Exit is Mach number less than one. Now, if we follow the same uh, principles that we did for nozzles, then at minimum area, Mach number should be uh, equal to one. So, this is the ideal operating condition for a uh, CD diffuser without any shocks inside the duct. Uh, converting uh, the uh, supersonic flow to uh, subsonic flow. Uh, but uh, uh, we also know uh, about uh, various problems in uh, uh, the varying area ducts that is not just the area ratio you need to know about uh, pressure ratios also. So, similar to uh, the operation of nozzles uh, these diffusers also have operation characteristics according to the pressure ratio across this uh, CD duct. Okay. But even uh, more important uh, than uh, that is what is known as uh, the diffuser uh, starting problem. Uh, the problem uh, uh, the problem of uh, diffuser starting is just like you had um, nozzle uh, starting that is you started providing a certain pressure ratio that if it was a P naught was constant um, and then you reduced back pressure and you saw various flow regimes happen in the uh, nozzle. Uh, here in the diffuser also you will uh, have such uh, starting issues, but here the problem is that uh, the in inlet flow or the intake flow uh, that is coming into the intake is supersonic. It is not uh, that with the nozzle. nozzle the incoming flow was subsonic. It allowed uh, information propagation to happen both upstream and downstream, uh, but for a uh, diffuser this is not possible because incoming flow is uh, supersonic. The supersonic flow will not know uh, before it enters the duct uh, that there is a minimum area available. Okay. So, and Mach number can become 1 at that point. So, uh, this information is not uh, transferred upstream in a supersonic flow. So, the supersonic flow can never know about it. Suppose this diffuser was completely uh, closed and then suddenly it is open to supersonic flow, uh, then immediately at uh, the uh, exit of uh, uh, sorry at the inlet of the uh, diffuser uh, there would appear a normal shock because until that point. Uh, there would be no uh, 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 information propagation upstream. So, only after the normal shock once the flow becomes subsonic then uh, information can transfer uh, within the uh, uh, duct. Okay. So, within the diffuser, but uh, then what is the problem if the uh, flow has become uh, subsonic uh, and the shock is standing right at the uh, uh, entry of the duct. What is the problem at this particular point? Uh, the problem is that um, ultimately uh, we want an operation where uh, it is completely smooth uh, that you do not have any shocks. For that uh, this shock has to uh, go into the diffuser and be thrown out of it. Okay. So, uh, but uh, uh, if you go back and look at this uh, particular case when m1 is m is equal to uh, 1 at the throat and uh, we have a particular p naught for the um, exit um, uh, for the in internal in entry at the inlet and uh, this is then p star okay then uh, and a particular a star is known for this then uh, we know that p0 i multiplied by a star multiplied by a constant is mass flow rate m dot. Okay. Now, this is the uh, mass flow rate that this diffuser can allow, but if uh, a normal shock stands uh, right in the uh, uh, at the uh, entry of the uh, intake, uh, then if it has to support 
the same uh, mass flow rate uh, then the area should be something different. So, if it has to support the same mass flow rate m p 0 i that is at this point, but this is at p 0 2 after the shock. So, uh, the area that was supposed to be there was a star uh, in the ideal operation, but after the shock it is p 0 2 a 2 star. What is a 2 star? a 2 star is uh, p 0 i uh, a star by uh, p 0 um, sorry p 0 2 and uh, p 0 1 by p 0 2 p 0 i by p 0 2 is greater than 1 p 0 2 is smaller that means a 2 star is greater than a star. So, this is the key idea that if you if the shock has to be uh, pushed through the diffuser then the minimum area that the diffuser should have is much larger than the ideal operation of the uh, of the uh, diffuser so uh, this is for an ideal operation if this area ratio is provided for the diffuser uh, entry uh, then uh, the shock that stands uh, at the inlet of the diffuser uh, will never be uh, able to pass through the diffuser. Okay. So, uh, in order to sustain that uh, mass flow rate. So, uh, as a consequence uh, diffuser designs are dictated by this starting problem. Okay. So, uh, not only the uh, these points about area ratio you should also provide the correct pressure ratios also uh, as we have decided, but uh, I have discussed, but uh, important point is for uh, CD diffusers, convergent divergent diffusers or uh, supersonic diffusers. Uh, the main uh, uh, design approach or approach towards operation of diffusers is uh, the problem of uh, normal shock standing at the entry to the diffuser and causing the diffuser to unstart. Okay, that's uh, that uh, particular process is known as unstart. And if uh, there is no normal shock at the intake, uh, at the entry of the inlet, uh, then uh, supersonic flow exists um, all through the uh, convergent portion. Uh, and at the uh, exit, you can have a Mach number which is uh, less than one subsonic. But now the minimum area is not according to the uh, Mach 1 principle because uh, area is now larger a 2 star is greater than a star. So, as a consequence even at area minimum uh, Mach number will be greater than 1. In order to get uh, subsonic flows you should have a shock. So, a shock will exist in uh, diffuser operation. Uh, this shock will generally exist in the uh, divergent portion of the diffuser, so that after the shock you can have a um, diff, uh, diffusion by uh, subsonic to subsonic velocities. Uh, the uh, shock will not stand in a steady flow it will not stand anywhere in the convergent duct. So, if the pressure ratios are uh, changed beyond this value uh, then uh, the shock will come and sit at the um, intake of the uh, diffuser this is known as unstart. So, uh, you can look at the various uh, possible uh, 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 operating regimes of the uh, convergent divergent diffuser. We are talking about uh, cases where uh, you have incoming flow as supersonic Mach numbers. Uh, uh, these are the cases where there is normal shocks standing uh, at the uh, entry to the diffuser. Uh, the limiting case is that there is a normal shock at the entry to the diffuser and there is a uh, at the throat Mach number will become equal to 1. So, this is a, a limiting case. Okay. Uh, if further uh, changes are made the shock can move and be uh, pushed out of this particular point. So, the shock can move within the variable uh, uh, divergent portion of the uh, diffuser. So, since uh, we always provide areas 
greater than uh, uh, the A star for the entry Mach number in diffusers in order to achieve starting. Okay. So, in order to achieve uh, uh, subsonic flow you will always have shocks within the uh, diffuser. Okay. So, this is the highlight of uh, uh, diffuser operation and here I have uh, shown uh, a particular case uh, which we had uh, uh, looked at in the uh, uh, laboratory in wind tunnels. Uh, so, here there is a, a uh, intake diffuser for the supersonic flow and uh, this uh, kind of a diffuser is uh, having uh, two kinds of compression. There are compression ramps on the outside and before uh, there is a final uh, internal compression. So, it has both external compression uh, and internal compression. So, this kind of intakes are called mixed compression. Uh, intakes. Now, now, when it is com operating completely in the started uh, condition, uh, this is the case you have uh, a supersonic flow uh, all through, this is supersonic, supersonic, uh, and the evidence of supersonic is the presence of these shock waves. Uh, shock waves uh, or oblique waves are present only in supersonic flows, and everywhere you see there are oblique waves they are uh, for supersonic flows. Uh, we control the back pressure by uh, changing uh, things at the end by using a flap and uh, increase back pressure. Beyond a certain point a certain back pressure uh, this flow is no longer able to produce a started flow and uh, it pushes all the uh, shocks out and you have a um, near normal shock that is standing out of the intake. So, here you see that Mach number is greater than 1 here, but here Mach number is less than 1. So, this is an unstarted uh, intake. So, in diffusers uh, when we look at diffusers uh, the major problem is uh, starting of diffusers and uh, diffusers are always designed so that they can be started. So, uh, even though in ideal conditions we expect that the minimum area at the minimum area uh, Mach number should be 1, A minimum Mach number should be a 1, uh, but in order to ensure that uh, the diffuser starts in uh, any condition we have to uh, provide for a larger area. Okay. So, this is for ideal operation I would say A star and this is A minimum, um, A minimum will always be greater than A star, so that uh, the diffuser uh, starts. So, uh, now having known this let us understand this uh, these principles another application of these nozzles and diffusers is in uh, uh, design of uh, experimental uh, test facilities which we will see in the next class. Uh, thank you.